welcome everyone this to, meeting the, is being recorded. to the Norton Planning Board's meeting of Tuesday, December 15th. Um, as we all know, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, imposing limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this meeting of the Town Norton Planning Board is being conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Uh, specific information and guidelines for participation for members of the public and or parties with a right or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Norton's website. To join this meeting, please click the Zoom link included in the agenda for the meeting itself. You can also join using the Zoom app using meeting ID 638-929-1060. Um, you may also view the meeting on Norton Cable Access or the next day on Norton Media Center's YouTube page. No in-person atten in -person attendance of members of the public is permitted, but every effort is being made sure to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, please feel free to email questions to the board ahead of the meeting or during the meeting to Paul D. Giuseppe, the town planner, whose email address is posted on the town of Norton's website. Additionally, there are meeting materials available on the Norton Planning Board's website. Uh, thank you everybody for listening to the umpteenth regurgitation of that uh, start to our remote participation meeting. Uh, we will kind of get going here in uh, short order. Uh, we do not have any planning board business or policies that I'm aware of that we need to address at this time. Um, in terms of bills and warrants, there are none in the in the folder. Um, Paul, there have been some recent bills, um, specifically the Horsley Witten one for the master plan, correct? But we had, uh, uh, for the master plan, uh, we had Serpent, our, our regional planning agency, Horsley Witten, uh, they're you know, reviewing the uh, construction work over at Blue Star, so that's been funded through uh, a peer review. Okay. Um, yeah. So those are ongoing. Uh, after that, we do have one set of minutes in the folder from our November 11th meeting, our November 17th meeting. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from November 17th that are in the folder? Yes. Uh, if anybody has any change, if any, does anybody have any changes, or uh, are we, or otherwise, I would look for a motion. Motion to approve minutes. Second. Thank you, Oren, for the motion and Julie for the second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will go to a roll call vote. Joe, you're first in line on my screen here. And you're muted, Joe. Uh, If you want to just hit spacebar, that should un that should temporarily unmute you. Are you here? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was. Uh, I'll abstain. I was absent for that meeting. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Mark. Yes. Kevin. Yes. Julie. Yes. Scott. Yes. And Steve. Yes. And I will vote yes. So that is six ayes and one abstention. So the minutes of the 17th are approved. Um, moving on to the rest of our agenda this evening, which looks busy, but we'll uh, move through a couple of these quickly. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the remand of special permit 486 and 491, which is 60 West Main Street. Um, this applicant is seeking a continuance to our January 19th meeting of next year. So moved. I'll second. Thank you. Question I had for Paul.
Paul, was there any discussion about extending the uh, debate? We have to uh, uh, update the court on this. Uh, I did forward that to town council, but I have not heard a response yet. My position on that would simply be our update would be in, it, we held our initial meeting on X date if we don't have any conclusions to draw at this time, at that time. And the other question is, do we need to send out a notice of this this remand hearing? Is this question, is, it, is it a new hearing? Is it a remand? In terms of the butters? It was re-noticed. It was completely. Okay. Yeah, a butters and a paper. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, so we have a motion and a motion from Julie and a second from Steve. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will uh, move right along. Joe? Yes. Lauren? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Julie? Yes. Scott? Yes. And Steve? Yes. And I will vote yes. So, special permit 46 and 491 remand are continued to January 19th of 2021, a year which did not get here soon enough. Uh, next item on the agenda is special permit 494, Jazeera Rear A Street. Uh, this applicant is seeking a continuance to our January 5th, 2021 meeting. So moved. Thank you, Julie, for the motion. A second. Thank you, Steve, for the second. Is there any further discussion on this application? Hearing none. Joe? Yes. Oren? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Julie? Yes. Scott? Yes. And Steve? Yes. And I will vote yes. SP 494 is continued to January 5th of 2021. Uh, the next item on the, the agenda is a special. I'd like to open the public hearing for a special permit 6956, which is 227 East Main Street. This is an application for a special permit site plan modification to remove building three from the existing Blue Star Business Park project and replace it with parking. Um, and we have Mark Dibb on the line as well as I believe Mr. O'Neill from Condine as well. Um, so I will um, hand it over to you gentlemen to uh, make an initial presentation. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mark Dibb with Condine Engineering Group. And again, Jeff O'Neill on the line. Uh, just before we start, am I able to share my screen or does it go through you guys? You should have that ability. Okay. You can, Mark. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so everybody can see that site plan? Yes. Uh, so tonight we're here to present a change um, of the site plan for our phase one of Blue, Blue Star Business Park. Um, just to, before that, I'll bring you up to date. Um, this is what we had called phase one. Uh, if you've been by Leonard Street recently, our building five is up and half of it's occupied by Wayfair. And building four is up and nearly complete and getting ready for its first tenants as well. Um, as well as we've driven Leonard Street, um, the Leonard Street improvement work is done. As well, our sewer connection to um, further up, one, uh, 123 is done, as well as the majority of the work for the interchain, intersection is complete. We're uh, waiting for some national grid work and our mast arms, uh, which will be going up shortly. So our proposed change has to deal with uh, building four. We have a tenant that requires some additional um, sprinter van and parking spaces. And what we are proposing to do is remove building three, which is down in this area, the back of the site, 
and um, basically put a parking lot in its place. Um, you've seen the submitted drawings, so this is a color version of the plan. This did it change screens to a, a black one? Yes, it did. You're good. So this this is that same area of the actual approved site plans. So again, you see the building, um, the back of the building, kind of fronted on the loading area. The front of the building was off um, to the wetland side. And then what we're proposing is a uh, to replace that building. Again, we're seeing that same area with a parking lot that will serve uh, the new tenant in building four. It'll have some larger van spaces. It uh, will have some trailer spaces as well as employee parking spaces. And just some other fine, smaller things to do with the design. There will be a fence along this side. So they will not be accessing these driveways uh, that support building two. So it'll be limited. There won't be any like crossover out of out of this area. Their main entrance into the parking lot will be through their own loading areas. Um, we are also proposing um, a crosswalk with uh, a ramp here and access to the side of the building in this area, as well as some other minor um, fencing that will uh, give an appearance that this is the new tenant space so there's a, basically a fencing here there's not going to be a gate but there's going to be a fencing that looks like it's um, creating a uh, loading area for this tenant only um, we this are, gives the appearance of a tunnel almost yes um, some a few other little things Try to do one more on the zoom here let it settle in uh, this gray line represents the old proposal. So this is a building. So we're actually on the conservation related end. This hatching area is um, areas, an area of a swale and pavement that we're actually pulling back work out of the riverfront area. So our impact to any wetlands and conservation related areas is um, being decreased. Uh, we will be uh, getting requesting an amended order of conditions for this project we anticipate being on the uh, conservation agenda in early january we do not have that approval yet but um so basically we're removing the building and the parking that was in this area replacing it with all parking um so as far as impervious coverages and things like that we're we're uh, re reducing impervious coverage drainage is being so the same amount of runoff is, is being uh, routed to the same basin. Um, so that is the proposed change, and I guess the what we're seeking is a special permit for um, a parking lot in excess of 25 uh, parking spaces. You no longer need the 10,000 square foot for, um, and that's for lot. These are the lot lines. Uh, so this is lot three. Lot three. Three A. Yes. Um, so and again, it's to support a new tenant that we're uh, getting for the building. Um, I we did receive some questions from Warren. If now is a good time. I could go through those. Uh, um, sure. Yeah, I think we can. Good. I think we can. I think I have one question that but it may be answered is kind of you walk through um, the other questions as well i think uh, since i'm not sure if the members of the board have seen but we do have a copy of these questions and answers in our inbox as of 20 minutes ago yep. um, so um, thank you for providing those in, uh, already uh, but why don't we go through those and then we can address any further questions Okay, I'll try, try to make it quick, but um, yeah. the first question was, is Conway proposing to change the lot lines for lots 2, 3, and 4? And uh, not at this time. Uh, there will be, eventually, be an ownership change and lender change, and at that point, we may adjust the lot lines, um, potentially combining lot 3A, 4A together. 
but we are not doing that currently at this time. The new use for Lot 4, our tenant is Pitney Bowes Company, and they, uh, I think I already covered that, but they need additional parking and sprinter van parking uh, for package delivery service, as well as some additional trailer storage. Uh, will there be any sales or customer services on the premises? No. The projected number of employees is plus or minus 50 per shift, per shift, two shifts a day. And that's in the mark, that's after full operation. You know, so that's uh, a little ways out. That's not immediate. Okay. And um, the added parking appears to be fenced off from the remainder of the parking field inside of the building, too, and accessible only from the police confirm. Yes, that is correct. It's fenced off along the side. Um, and it is only accessible once you come around that corner and get into the loading area. This is the way to get into that parking area. Understands the town is negotiating a hosting agreement with the retail marijuana store to be located in the retail portion. What additional parking needs is the applicant anticipating for this use? Um, you can see the response that we understand that the town is negotiating a hosting agreement with uh, Exit 10, but that opportunity does not affect this permitting. From our understanding, once the agreement is complete, Exit 10 will start to focus on the re real estate. Um, parking needs. The unused area of Lot 3A can be directed toward Building 2 retail. At a quick review, Building 2 could be serviced by a potential 117 spaces. So we're actually, it gives a, this gives flexibility to actually allow more spaces for Building 2 because uh, we had some overlap on the requirements of Building 3. Confirm the current uh, driveway size between Buildings 1 and 4, uh, which is this driveway here. This area is also earmarked to service a future bus stop, future walk, and plans to the same here. Um, yeah, so that driveway is uh, 36 feet wide. It's already built and has approved on the plans. The future bus stop has not changed. Uh, this walk that we're installing will not affect uh, the potential future bus, uh, bus stop. And uh, we do have a continue to have a placeholder for a drive through on building one um, we don't this change should not require any changes on those items and given the, the next question was given the anticipated passenger traffic and pass parking associated with the request of change and anticipated for a retail and a store why can't the reserve drive through which is not currently permitted be removed and added to the driveway with or at least in the area between building one and four. Again, we're not any prospective future use. Uh, we're not changing anything at this point for within buildings one and two, and what's between one and four as well. Uh, this this proposal today should not affect that area. Uh, what is the projected timing for putting the traffic lane at the intersection? Kind of covered that, but we're, we're very close. We're um, masked arms and equipment will be going in soon, as well as we have a pole to be relocated that's scheduled for uh, to start being re relocated on December 29th. So we're hopeful um, it's very soon, within a month or two, um, that'll be up and running. What needs to go to the Conservation Commission? Again, we're gonna just, we're requesting an amended order for lot three. Again, pulling away from riverfront area that was already approved, so they approved moving into the riverfront area already, but we're pulling back from that, so there should not be uh, any issues. And um, in the initial submittal, I made a statement um, that we had a reduction of 1536 trips. Um, in that, this paperwork we gave you, um, I pulled out the traffic report summary, trip summary, from our original traffic report, which showed the daily trips based on the retail, the warehouse, and the office, and then also created a quick spreadsheet um, showing when we reduce building three, which was actually proposed as the, the largest retail building, um, the 16,000 square feet of retail, it reduced that trip um, generation by the 1521 uh, trips.
trips. Uh, so I think now, if there's additional questions or Owen has follow-up questions or anybody else on the commission, we'd be happy to answer them either myself or Jeff. Sure. I know, um, Mark Press, I had a couple of questions, but I will um, let the other members of the board kind of um, speak first. So I don't know if um, anybody would like to um, kind of lead off here. I know, Oren, your kind of first uh, set is already kind of through. Um, No one else has any questions. <clears throat> Can I just do a, just a short follow-up on it? Thank you guys for responding. I didn't have a chance to look at the uh, least the presentation you have, uh, but it's very helpful to get that information. Just two open, a couple of open questions. Do you happen to know what kind of a schedule of work these guys are going to be on on two shifts? Do you have any idea what that might be? Uh, I don't have that on at this point, but that's something that we can look into. But plan on two shifts, probably starting at 6 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, and then proceeding. Okay. Yeah. And then the other thing was, you keep on referring to this as, as lot 3A. And is there, is there is some difference? Hold on, if you don't. When it, it, that was a technicality. The, the reference to 3A, that was a kind of a technicality when we had to revise that subdivision line. Um, we just had to change it from 3 to 3A. It, it, it's, it's other than that on the survey, uh, no other changes. I, I'm assuming you know, eventually try to reallocate those lots so that we attribute them to, to the retail and, the, and to this location going down the road somewhere. But eventually, and that's what we responded in your question, that is an option to, for us to do down the road, but it's not required now. Oh, no. So lots. Yeah. The lots would be under the same ownership and proceed. If building two goes right away, then obviously easements can be traversed back and forth between the property lines. Okay. Um, and then, questions I didn't hear you answer. Can you just confirm what the width is of the driveway between four and five? 36 feet, as constructed, as approved, as designed. In four and five? Correct. One, one and four. Yes, both of them, sorry. Okay, because I was just looking at the. The plan that you submitted had a different number. The uh, 5 1920 subdivision, it showed two lanes each 30 each. And I just wanted to confirm which, which is which. In the, in the revised subdivision of 5 1920? Um, I can look into that, but uh, we, we definitely, we even measured in the field after we got your comments. The 36, it's a 36 foot wide. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've got a, a couple here just in terms of, uh, Mark, if you can stay zoomed out a little bit here. Just from my understanding here the for, uh, for the new, for the new situ for the future conditions potentially, how are employees for this large building <coughs> for Hopefully, Pitney Bowes, their only entrance to the facility is to go all the way past the building and then turn in. Correct? Uh, that, that is correct. There, there's a very strict security on the building. Uh, they do a lot of work for the U.S. Postal Service and various other uh, retail clients. So, um, as you well know, the name Pitney Bowes uh, related to mailing and machines and sorting and postage and things like that. They've diversified their business as that kind of ended, or slowed down, I should say. And now they're in a full 3PL fulfillment type of uh, operation. Okay. So all Which, employees are designed to go through that side entrance with no no I mean, no exceptions. Understood. Uh, and I think your answer there kind of leads into my next question. So this is designed and being looked at as a um, pardon the real estate term, I guess, but a last mile facility? In essence, yes. Um, is there been any kind of, I know we talked a little bit about trip generation based on the size of the building. Obviously, last mile situations are something where the trip volume tends to be higher from my expectation. Um, is there... Has, 
Tim, there isn't a change on the ITE standards. So the ITE standards for both fulfillment and regular warehouse are under the same calculation and, and traffic count. Okay. From a, from a standards position, they're treated the same. Okay. Right. Um, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm trying to avoid is obviously, um, I'm not sure if you've seen any of the, the news reports about Amazon and Milford kind of butting heads over their facilities over there with all of the Amazon trucks. Obviously, Pitney Bowes is not Amazon. It's a completely different corporate entity. Right. Uh, but in terms of lots of last mile trips, that's kind of something that is something that I just kind of wanted to mention. Understood. Uh, I guess for um, just kind of for an open kind of uh, we talked about the light at Leonard Street. Do you have have you received any updates about the light at 123 from the state with everything going on at that level or no? Mark, have you? Yeah, they're they're um they they're ready for mask arms as well. I saw the bases out there. Um, they've done a significant amount of work, I believe. I see the cuts across the lanes. I think all the underground is in as well. So they may be in the exact same position we are. The mast arms have had six month lead times. So hopefully they're following right behind, but they have done the majority of the work. Okay, thank you. Uh, in terms of, I'm not sure if there's anything else from other members of the board, but in terms of um, next steps, you mentioned that you still have um, additional um, meetings scheduled with the Conservation Commission. Um, is there anything pending? I assume there's um, pending drainage updates and all of those things. Yes. Um, it's I don't know if they are going to review drainage specifically. Um, it, again, it's the same amount of water going to the same place. It's uh, pretty straightforward. But um, there is a formality that we need an amended order. Um, I, I couldn't get it pushed through as a minor uh, administrative change. So, um, you know, we're, we're welcome to to get to that meeting first, it need be with the planning board uh, or planning board decision happens. Um, that would be fine as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think removing a building seems to be slightly more than a minor administrative modification, but uh, it, it is one impervious surface for another, so I understand from a drainage perspective how, uh, how that might uh, be different. Uh, do any other members of the board have anything that they would like to ask of the applicant at this time? So just uh, as a general observation, uh, good for you that you have a premier tenant, but uh, part of me is saddened that we're losing 16,000 square feet of maximum base. But Understood. I think uh, in the end also, Joe, the, what's important is the excise tax from any sort of vehicles garage there goes to the town of North. So in lieu of the loss of real estate taxes, you pick up the, the excise taxes on the vehicles. Okay. Um, so other than hearing no other comments from members of the board, um, our actions would be either to act on the special permit itself or look to continue it to a future meeting. Since, um, Mark, I know you've mentioned that um, you would be open to kind of continuing this as you can kind of continue to work with conservation and other um, right. town boards. Uh, that's correct. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. What was your next... Uh, our next meeting is the 5th of January, 2021. Would we just, uh, I, think you, I think, Mark, you should look at the 19th, only yeah. allow enough time. So the 19th, if you have availability, that would be great. Paul, 
Paul, I know we have one item on the agenda for the 19th. Is there anything else or just that one? Uh, I would expect probably zero rear ready, assuming it gets continued or whatever happens with that. It might be on the 19th, but we don't have any new applications in at this point. Okay. As zero rarity has been continued, I think, approximately for the last six meetings. So uh, I haven't kept track, but uh, maybe more uh, I think than that. So um, I think that makes sense if we wanted to look at the uh, January the 19th of 2021. Uh, Anybody has any further questions or would like to make a motion? I will stop talking. Move to continue to January 19th. Second. Thank you, Joe, for the motion and Oren for the second. Is there any further discussion? Um, Tim, I, I just wanted to ask um, can you restate the reason why we would uh, postpone the, the vote decision tonight? I think you may have mentioned it, but I didn't pick up on it. Uh, there's some additional work that Condine is doing with conservation, which ties into drainage and other aspects of the, um, of the project. I think there was one question that Mark was going to circle back on from Oren. Uh, is this the that, that's good. And, and Mark and Jeff, the, this delay does not affect your, your tenant? No, no. The, we're in the we're in the winter months right now, so the construction of the parking lot is a spring event. Okay. Thank you. I wish it wasn't the case, but that's where we're at now. It certainly won't be happening after Thursday. <laughs> right. I, I will tell you this time of year, though, I can see all the lights in the back of the uh, Wayfair building from my uh, backyard. <laughs> so, so it looks like a pretty good operation already up and running and operating 24/7. Uh, so, yes, they're doing well. Yeah. So we do have a motion on the floor. Um, Joe with the motion, Orm with the second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will go to a vote. Joe? Warren? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Julie? Yes. Scott? Yes. And Steve? Yes. And I will vote yes. SP 6956 is continued to January 19th, 2021. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. We'll see you in, in a month or so. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Have a good night. Thank you, too. Okay. Next item on the agenda here is special permit 6691 open the meeting for that. This is 176 South Washington Street. This is an application for a special permit to relocate a billboard currently located at Three Lopes Drive. And I believe we have John Carroll from Carroll Advertising here in the meeting. So John, if you want to, the board does have all of the um, materials you've submitted here in a folder, but if you want to um, present anything or share anything, you do have that ability through the Zoom meeting. Mr. Chairman. Oh. That, he is trying to talk, yes. but I know he is. John, you're muted. That's okay. There he is. Got me? Sorry. Got you. Yep, we got you now. Okay. Uh, to, for a quick overview, thank you. Um, uh, at the time the board was being built, there was uh, there was some discussions with the uh, adjacent landowner um, about the, the that piece between uh, uh, Lopes and 495, the Paradigm parcel. Um, it, as as uh, as uh, luck would have it, they they got a tenant in the building, and now they were able to discuss seriously about that parcel, which allows us to move the board farther away from any residential uh, structure cut fewer trees and, and get, at the end of the day, a better sight line for 495. Um, obviously, there's a, you know, there's expense attached to it, but um, I feel that it's worthwhile to try to uh, take advantage of that, um, that extra uh, closeness to the roadway and, and have less impact on, you know, the trees and the neighborhood. So I think overall, 
the move benefits me and in the town and the surrounding area. So hopefully you guys will see it that way too. But as far as the technicalities, Dan is here to speak to a frontage. I, want, I was going to do it a, a, another way. Um, and obviously we had some uh, um, frontage and, 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 um, and lot coverage uh, requirements that I wasn't aware of. So we, we, we structured it in a way that we're able to comply um, uh, on our end for an approval here. So hopefully help. Any technical questions? I know Dan is uh, well versed in it. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I can share my screen here and just give you guys a quick old. Sure, please do. So, um, as the board will recall, you recently um, uh, had a hearing for this, for the construction of a billboard at Three Lopes Drive, and this is the original layout and location. This is Three Lopes Drive here. Yes. 176 Washington is the building next door. And you have this little finger of land that 176 Washington used to own that, it, that extends between three lobes and 495. So what John has done is he has um, made arrangements to acquire the land behind three lobes drive. He's done that. So the land in this board worse than they are not too long ago for that, that purpose and what has been done last friday a small parcel here and a larger parcel here where it was deeded to the owner of three lopes drive now three lopes drive owns this entire piece that extends all the way to 195. And there was a question raised about front between area and that resolves that question so now three lopes drive has you know frontage on Lopes Drive and ample area. What, app, what the applicant is proposing to do basically is just move this billboard about 60 feet closer to 495, which is John indicated will improve sight lines and just make it a better billboard uh, in terms of its operating purpose. But beyond that, you know, the, the, the whole uh, discussion and, and, and purpose of the application is really unchanged from your prior special permit application. It's still going to be a, a, a double-sided V-shaped billboard. It's the exact same billboard that's up there now. They're just going to pick it up off the foundation and pour a new foundation and then move it back 60 feet over the The zoning board, we did meet with the zoning board last night. Uh, as in the original application, the applicant obtains the variance for the setback here from the board to an existing non-conforming residential structure. Uh, on the property, uh, they, the zoning board granted a variance for that last night, and they also granted a, a setback variance to allow the board to be two feet from the property. So the application, the, the information provided to you is consistent with that. But if you have any questions about it, uh, John and I are happy to answer. Thank you. Um, is to start off, did you receive the list of the uh, initial inquiries that were uh, sent over via the board? We saw some comments about area and frontage. Um, so those comments were basically addressed by what John did on Friday, which was to take and deed all of this land to the owner of Three Lopes Drive, which is JWL LLC. So now this entire piece you know, has is all one lot. It has ample, it has more than 10,000 square feet of area. It has ample money. Uh, so there is street frontage for the? On Lopes Drive, yes. Okay. Um, Lauren, I know some of these questions came from you in terms of um, the bylaw and the frontage. Um, as well we've discussed at this point, satisfy those questions from your perspective? Yeah, no, thank you. I, I think it does. The two questions I have is now the, the owners of the property are JW LLC. Do we need to have a, well, do we need to have an application for a special permit from them? Because before the owners were somebody else. They had lot, I think it was lot A on the property. And they are so, applicants. So there's a new applicant now, or a cool. change applicant. The applicant is Carol Advertising, so the applicant hasn't changed. The owner has changed, which is correct. At the time of the application, 
uh, the owner of the parcel in question where the billboard sits was Hip One LLC. Um, but because of the deeding of this land on Friday to JWL, they're the new owner. I don't know. Procedurally, I'm not sure that you need a modified application, but if you do, we're, we're happy to provide that to you. But the applicant itself is Carol Advertising. That has uh, well, I, 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 I'll leave it to Paul, but I would think it's not just a name change, it's a property change. You're, you're changing it to a different property location. Yeah, so I just think, I don't think it's a major thing, but I think we need to have it because I think the special permit runs with the land. And right now, we don't have the land identified correctly. The other question I had is, I'm assuming that any, any special permit we issue will require that right now, you show it as a lot, I think it's e, uh, D, and I'm assuming that, um, that lot A and D will, will remain in common ownership. Yes, they're in common ownership as we speak. Um, so here's the A&R plan, so D is where the billboard will sit. C is here, all C and D have been deeded to the ownership of parcel A, so A, C, and D are now all in common ownership. So okay. we could certainly condition that that um, stay, okay. and then I, remain in common ownership. And I'm assuming you, you've worked with the owners of parcel B, obviously, to acquire property from them, and they have no issue with this, the setback of that sign relative to their property in terms of any, any question with any damage that could do that fell over onto their property? I'm assuming they have no. No, they had no issue. No. And then, and then I don't know, maybe Paul, you can help me. The other question I had was the thousand foot radius seems to some reason to go over 495 into some area that looks like it's just um, vegetation. I don't know. I mean, just forestry. I don't know. Are there any residents on that side? There's nothing but woods over there. On the other side of 495? Yeah. The nearest. I remember we discussed that with the initial application. Uh, thank you. But the other thing, assuming we will also need a, a revised deed commission agreement, we have one for the other site. I think we're going to need a deed commission agreement. Um, I think it references a specific um, parcel. And owner, so I probably would need another decommissioning agreement. It could be the same thing, we just have to be updated with the right parties. Yeah. I think in John's letter to the board, which is in our folder, um, essentially for the decommissioning, the, all of the surety and all that is going to remain intact, and all of this is going to be kind of, uh, for lack of a simpler term in my head, paid out of pocket and everything else stays continual, but in terms of paperwork, I see what you're, you mean, Oren. Yeah. Um, Paul, I know Oren kind of um, asked the question to you, but I'm not sure if you've had a chance to respond. Do you feel like we need an updated um, application specifying the, the updated um, parcels and owners? Yeah, I, I think just to be safe, uh, it's just, I, I, I you know, would check with, with town council, but I think some affidavit or something like that, just the, the identifying that they're the new owner of the property, and because owners have to agree to submit applications on their property, so I think that would just put everyone in a safer place if we just get to that. And then I can look also at the, um, the surety agreement and, and work to make any you know, those are minor changes to it, but let's just make sure everything lines up correctly. We can provide a letter from the, the new owner of the land indicating their consent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that would suffice. I mean, it was correct when it was submitted a change, but if you have some, uh, uh, some written letter that's uh, they're consenting their approval of this, that should work. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Crossing that T, so to speak. Yep. Uh, are there any further comments from members of the board at this time? Hearing nothing, I guess I would be looking for 
direction on this. Any motion to approve? Thank you, Steve, for the motion. Is there, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Julie, for the second. Is there any uh, further discussion on this? I assume the motion to approve is pending uh, the either affidavit or some uh, some evidence that the new owner is comfortable with the application and the, deline the redelineation of the lots. Is that the complete condition of the motion? If that's the consensus, yeah. Yeah, I, I would add to that. I, I think there should be a re requirement because this is now, they did do a subdivision and uh, they have a separate lot and they have it on a, posted on as a separate lot that we require that lots D and is it, I think it's D and A remain in, in common ownership. So really that satisfies the condition. Steve, do you consider that a friendly modification to your motion? Yes, absolutely. And Julie, does your second stand? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, Chair, yeah, can I get clarification, Orrin? You said uh, lots A and D? A and, A and D. Is that okay. It basically provides street frontage to the, the little bitty lot. And parcel C, while it's in co common ownership now, it doesn't necessarily affect that one way or the other. Okay. Is that... Am I interpreting your feelings correctly, Orrin? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? You, this is Scott. Can you just clarify the motion again? I sure. spoke on the motion on the table. Pages, like there's a lot going on here. Just it's not so, great. So the, the motion on the table is to approve the site plans, the special permit application contingent on lots A and D continuing to be held in common ownership, uh, which allows for street frontage and access to the billboard, um, as well as um, receiving an updated affidavit from the owner of the property um, signifying that their um, approval with this project um, because the ownership of the lots has shifted since the initial application was submitted um, just to make sure that uh, it's in the record that even though the, the name on the ownership has changed the position of the ownership has not and does all conditions and requirements of the first approval then transfer just naturally? Uh, you know, that was the question I had was, is it decision, I don't know what the other terms, the, rest of the, the first decision was, I don't know if they had any questions on it. And the second thing is, do we have to put something in that, it now was a, was a billboard already installed or was it to be installed? It was already. The billboard's already there. Well, then, we, do we need something in it conditioning that, that that billboard be removed and that special permit no longer will apply once it's removed so we don't have two special permits? You can indicate that your, your this special permit supersedes the prior. Yeah, this would be a modification to that special permit. Um, can you modify it even though it's on a different yeah. lot of here? That's true, it has. Can't we make it this subject to the, the relocation of the, the removal of the existing sign and the, um, I don't know what we call it, whether it's a termination of that, that special permit, so it's not to don't have two special permits, but it needs to be a condition on the removal of that sign so we don't have any cases. I thought you would want to do that, but that would be, we're approving it if we don't. You'd have two additional per conditions. One would be that the current sign be removed or relocated, and that uh, parcels A and B be held in uh, common ownership. In addition to the other conditions, which were all, I looked at them, they seemed like fairly standard conditions. Okay, and 
so what happens with the previous special permit itself? Is it just ceases to exist or? I think you probably would indicate in this decision that this supersedes that prior special permit and that prior special permit is no longer valid as soon as this special permit is acted upon. That would be part of the motion. It would be a, con it should be a condition of the special permit? I think that makes sense. of information. Thank you, Julie. Is listing it under what I'm assuming is the previous special permit number an issue now? Like, should it be issued under a new special permit number? I'm sorry, am I complicating this more? I think I'm trying to follow. It, it will be. A new special permit application? Yeah, it, it will require a new special permit number. then what does that mean for noticing? Yeah, so I think we're getting into the weeds here. I think um, it might be good to withdraw a motion. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing, Steve, as, uh, as far as my second. I think we need to clean this up, Paul. Yeah, I, I, we're kind of flying blind right here. Uh, I'm gonna withdraw my motion. Understood, Steve. So the motion has been withdrawn. This is something that should have been worked out before it was even brought to us tonight. So just as a I'm gonna I'm gonna motion to continue this. So Steve, to, to your point, are you interested then in seeing closure to the existing special permit on the lot as it stands with that landowner and a new application be submitted, leveraging the content of the other with the new special permit for review? Is that what you're thinking, Steve? I'm not necessarily thinking that has to happen, but I, I want to make sure that we're doing it properly. And if, and if a new special permit does have to be given, then we have to have a new special permit application. Okay. I, yeah, I, I just I, I want to make sure we're doing it the right way. Yeah, no, I agree. It, it does seem lack of clarity here is a little bit rough. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, please. Um, know that the application when it was submitted was accurate um, so there's been a change of ownership in the interview time I think that you know the submission of a letter from the current owner is an easy thing I, I think that you could simply indicate in your findings in addition to all the prior findings which are unchanged that um, this special permit will supersede the prior special permit when it's acted upon and then you would just have the two additional conditions on top of all the other conditions that you had previously, which is that the existing sign be uh, removed or relocated, uh, and that the two parcels be broken down. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Paul, from your perspective, you were you felt that as we talked through this that a new special permit number would be required that is that correct right typically when you when, we, when you get a new application in uh, we generate a new number for it which that happened here especially now since we are on a uh, online permitting system which now uh, creates a new number so this already has a new number associated yes. with it yes so that's already been done Just for purposes of discussion, we've got the, the two issues with uh, common ownership of, I believe, it, whatever those two lots are, um, some type of indication from the uh, new owner of the property that he is in support of the application uh, and, and issuance of the special permit. Those, those are the two that we've already discussed. As well as the removal of the well, uh, existing uh, sign. Well, I'm kind of getting to that. And sure. if we create a, a, a third condition that the owner of the rights to the previous special permit, which was Mr. Carroll, surrender any and all rights to that special permit in exchange for the issuance of the new one, um, upon the requirement and movement of, of 
the existing billboard to the new location. Doesn't that cover all our bases? Sounds good to me. <laughs> I mean, if, if you lose any rights to that previously issued special permit, the only caution that the town needs to have is that, in fact, you do move it, and that would be a condition. Then I think we've covered all those bases, have we not? There's also a state element here, so even if, you know, if you guys thought I'd have two, two billboards right next to each other, the state wouldn't allow any anyway. So I have to, I have to get this uh, permit also modified by the state uh, as well. Steve, does um, what Joe described meet what you feel is needed given the um, given your thoughts on the project? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Um, like I said, I just want to make sure we're, we're doing for it at least. Okay. And Paul, from a paperwork special permit noticing perspective, you feel that this all makes sense for what you have in process? Yeah. Yeah, that, that'll work. Okay. Um, and I think, Joe, I think and a fourth kind of piece of this would be that any conditions that were attached to the original special permit that we would include as conditions with this special permit. That would, but that would necessarily, that would and I think I'm treating that as being understood as part of the de written decision. Uh, but I think, uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to note at this point? Uh, or are we ready to? Uh, Perhaps what we can do is sort of approve it subject to conditions and maybe we can actually sign off on the decision at the next meeting because we also want to check with town council as to making sure that they could plan for that in the way they wanted to. Um, I have no problem letting it move along, but I think it's really, I don't think anybody has a real objection to, to the project itself, but just this process. And maybe it might be helpful for everybody to see it in writing and, and a piece of paper in terms of the conditions. So I thought to just move it along. So if you want to vote it yes subject to a review of the conditions, Maybe that's a way of getting to where you want to be. I'm open to the approach. We really do it. We will just continue everything on it. So I'm open to what Joe suggested. We open up with the, the actual conditions to review. Either way, we're, we're just continuing with that. I'm open to either one. I think everything that we need to get done is on at least on the table. And how we get there is you know, whatever, whatever everybody's going for. Well, I think in, in terms of, uh, of uh, allowing Mr. Carroll to move forward, and particularly where the state still needs to review it, I think it does make sense that we approve it subject to a review of conditions. Those conditions uh, be those those four topics that we, we touched on. So uh, given we're still going to deal with the state, it probably makes sense that uh, you know, Paul have an opportunity to draft the conditions so that everyone's comfortable with it. So I move that we approve subject to review of conditions. I second. Thank you, Joe, for the motion and Steve for the second. Uh, I'll try this again. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I will move to members for a vote. Joe? Yes. Warren? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Julie? Yes. Scott? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I will vote yes. So, um, thank you, uh, Daniel and John, Paul. Um, we can look at those. Once the decision is drafted, we can review the conditions um, in a future meeting. Do you want to continue it to the year January 5th? No, or we've approved it. It's, just it's, it's been approved subject to conditions, so it's just the review of the conditions at the future meeting date. Um, 
So if the decision right. is ready for the fifth, then we can put it on the fifth. I'll be working on it tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Okay. Um, as far as I am aware, that is the last item on our agenda this evening. Um, Paul, did you have anything else in terms of housekeeping that you wanted to share with the board? No, that, that's all. I'll get that. I'll start working that on that decision tomorrow with the goal of getting it out to you all um, Wednesday or Thursday. So. Okay. Um, I have nothing else, so um, I'm just going to sit here and wait then. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Thank you, Julie, for the motion and Kevin for the second. Is there any further discussion? Happy, happy holiday, and let's have a nice year. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. Happy, happy holiday. holidays to you all, and thank you. We still need to vote on this, though. Joe? <laughs> well, let's discuss this some more. Um. <laughs> uh -huh. That was, right. the, was a resounding yes. Yes. Kevin? Yes. Julie? Yes. Scott? Yes. Steve? I guess I'll go along with that. And I'll vote yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Happy holidays, guys. Happy holidays. Holiday. Holiday. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, 2020.